The nice thing, I, I rolled this thing out this morning at 11, so I'm looking at my oil temperature. It's already close to where it needs to be anyways. So, all right. Make sure this thing runs for it. There we go. And we have oil pressure. Bottom right, the short little needle, that's the first thing we always look at when she starts, because if we don't have oil pressure, it'd be good to shut it down and investigate as to why. Okay, uh, let's start our pre-takeoff checklist. C is controls, cigar again. There you go, check their elevator, rudder. Make sure everything works like it's supposed to. Rudder pedals, feel okay? Yep. All right, and we're starting to move. So go ahead and slide your feet to the tops of the pedals. There, just add a little, a little bit of break. Great, I is instruments. Go ahead and set your altimeter at 800 feet. That's what we are above sea level. There you go, airspeed's at zero. The little black ball looks like it's out to the left a little bit. That'll work fine for us. Your vertical speed indicator tells you what you're kind of doing four seconds ago. We, we will actually use that today. Okay, we use it a little less. Yeah, it's, it's important on turns, but it'll tell you what you're doing when you're shooting these approaches in to the field and not. And uh, climbing out. Your tachometer bouncing around 600 RPM. Our oil pressure is in the green, and our oil temperature is not in the green. But uh, we're not going to, yeah, we might get 40 on the ground. Probably not. It's warm today, so I think in flight, it's going to give us about 55 uh, degrees centigrade. G is gasoline. We have two hours and 20 minutes, looks like. All right. And you can kind of see the bobbers moving around a little bit in there, so it's not stuck. So that's a good that's a good uh, reading. Mixture is inside the cockpit on the left. I went all this uh, over all this with you twice before. And then your fuel valve is on. I usually just leave the fuel on at night with this because the, the carburetor doesn't leak. Mm -hmm. There's some of these engines. It, uh, the carburetor has a tendency to kind of leak, so drip drip on the floor. So you turn the fuel off at night. This one doesn't do that, which is good. Uh, a is accessories, elevator trim tab, as underneath the throttle. Yep. We don't need carburetor heat. That's this little guy right here. It's too hot to get a carb ice today. Okay. So, how about we listen to our ATIS? Clear three, Lima Tango, clear to the Flint Emma. Time 1653 Zulu, wind 1304, visibility 10. Ceiling at 3,800 broken. Okay, so they're saying the wind's 130 at four knots. Okay, so uh, that was taken half an hour ago. Okay. So go ahead and slide your feet back down to the bottom. Let's go ahead and look at not only this wind sock or the flag here, but the wind sock. Clear to the Chicago Air Airport as filed. Maintain uh, two thousand. Expect one six thousand one after departure. See the wind way down there between the buildings. The, yeah. It looks like it's favoring one seven, so we're going to use one seven. I'm going to ask to go down to this intersection right down here. So this is Bravo. This taxiway out here. He's going to have you go down Bravo and then uh, make a right on what they call Foxtrot. So we're going to have a slight left to right crosswind. Okay. okay. So let me uh, give him a call. Squawk five three four one fifty three forty one. Restroom back right. Contact ground. All right. Push. Airplane is yours. We'll make a right hand turn. The tailwheel's not. Let me get the tailwheel straight for you. It's not steerable yet. It's still. Now it'll work. Kalamazoo ground steerman one. We're at the air zoo with Lima, ready to taxi one seven Foxtrot. Steerman one right. comes to ground runway one seven at Foxtrot. Taxi via Bravo. One seven at Foxtrot on Bravo steerman one. There we go. Cool. So we've been uh, given the uh, okay to taxi. Put your left hand on that throttle, Barrett. I'm going to push it today. Okay. You got an hour of flight time in the steerman. We'll make a left hand turn. There you go. Hard left. As far as there we go. This is perfect. Yeah, that was one thing I had a little trouble with last time was the taxi. And yeah. Well. Uh, I guess waiting for the... Oh, yeah, there's a little the spring wheel. thing in the... Yeah. There you go, so start coming to the back. Everybody does, not just you. Want to contact the, to the uh, tower, tell them what we're going to do. Kalamazoo Tower, ground, Stearman 1. Stearman 1, ground. Yes, sir, we'd like to go out to the uh, southeast for about uh, 15 minutes.
Hertz and then come back inbound and we want to do uh, two uh, stop and goes on one seven. Chairman one, Roger, I have your butt. Thank you. We gotta learn how to land this rascal. Excellent. Yeah, the, the wind is it's favoring. It's kind of back and forth, but it's favoring one seven. There you go. So. Good. Getting the hang of it now. I hope so. <laughs> I can tell because every time people do this for the first time, they over control this thing big time. So what we'll do is we're going to build our little uh, flight profile around learning how to land it. So everything you're going to be doing today is based on that as far as altitudes and, and power settings and all that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. So here we go. This is where they want us to go. Uh, we've done our uh, pre-takeoff inspection. We've been done our pre-takeoff checklist. We have not checked our engine. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, slide your feet to the tops of the pedals. Apply a little pressure. That's the brakes. Bring the power up to 1,300 RPM, Barrett. On the far left-hand side of the panel is your uh, magneto switch. I'm going to have you check the mags, that little black lever that says off, L, R, and both. Go ahead and grab that uh, lever and switch it from both to R. So we lost a little bit of RPM, but what we did basically is we grounded the left magneto, and we just proved that the engine will run just fine on the right. Great. Back to both. Over to left. Same thing, we just grounded the right magneto. We lost about 60 RPM, that's fine. Back to both. Just because he teaches this, we're gonna check our carburetor heat, and I'll do that for you. We lost 30 RPM, which means that the carburetor heat system is working uh, correctly. Okay. All right, cool, you can gently bring the power on back to idle. You remember the takeoff procedure? We talked about it inside, you did it last time. The idea today is we're gonna Again, when we get clearance, we're going to head on out to the runway. Stick will be in neutral. Um, and as you bring the power forward, just remember, we're going to keep the airplane going straight. It's going to want to go a little bit to the left because of the crosswind. And uh, so we're going to be ready for that. So when the tail comes off the ground, we're going to be ready to add a little right rudder. Not much, just a little bit. But when that tail comes off the ground, she's telling you she's ready to fly. Okay. All right. And I'll talk you through it. As long as your heels are on the floorboards at this point, we don't need any more brake. So. Okay. Kalamazoo Tower, Stearman 1, we're ready to go at uh, 17 at Foxtrot. Stearman 1, Kalamazoo Tower, uh, left turn out approved, runway 17 at Foxtrot, clear for takeoff. Clear to go, left turn out, Stearman 1. All right, head on out there. So I'll bring it back to your left a little bit. There you go, good. So is there a little take up on the, on the rear wheel here that I'm feeling? No. And then we'll make this right-hand turn. We're going to take off to the right. And line it up on that white line. That's going to be your friend here today. And because of the crosswind, we're going to actually, on takeoff, we're going to have the uh, stick a little bit to the left. Just get it all lined up. We'll bring the power to idle here. Yeah, perfect. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready too. Heels on the floorboard, sticks in neutral, which is right about here. Bring the power all the way forward. A little bit to a little right rudder. Stick right here. All right, full power. Hold it right there. This will be easy. So here comes the tail, starting to get light. See how the nose goes to the left. Add a little right rudder. Good. She's ready to go. Bring the nose on up. Nice job. Now lower that nose. Lower the nose. Get some more airspeed. And then start bringing, bringing the power back. Thermal 4400 pounds with your There you go. 1800 RPM. Perfect. Hold it right there. Good job. Did you see that, that P factor that, and the crosswind uh, pulled the nose to the left? Yeah, it was very slight. Yeah, it's not much. A 
Okay, Baron, let's go ahead and make our left, uh, left hand turn here. If we go uh, climb straight out too far, you'll fly right over a bunch of houses. Our pattern altitude today is going to be 1,600 feet. That's going to be 800 feet above the ground. What's well, really weird when you're up on shooting patterns at Bessemer, I did rides in that brown airplane down there years ago. Uh, you know, Bessemer Airport sits on top of that hill. Oh, yeah. So when you're uh, landing there, you look down and you're way above the ground, right? Until you get near the runway right there. Very nice. Nice and smooth up here today. Yeah. I love that you like doing this. I think that's cool. Oh, yeah, that's very fun. All right, so we know from the windsock down there uh, which way the wind's blowing. If you want a visual cue or a visual suggestion of what it's doing, look at this lake here. You can kind of see what the wind's doing based on what it's looking like on the water. Right. So we're going to uh, pick this uh, field that's right into the wind. Let's go a little bit more to your right. Once we get to 1,600 feet bare, we're going to level off there, and then we'll reduce our power back to 1,750. There you go. Good. Now lower that nose. Let's go a little bit more to your right. Perfect. If you roll the wings back to level here, the field that we're going to is right over the nose. I don't know what, what kind of crop it is. Uh, it's not corn, it's not beans. I have no idea what it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly a big rectangle in the sky. Okay? That's the same thing we're going to do at the, uh, the airport here. They're going to have you shoot the left-hand pattern back in Kalamazoo when we go back. So we're going to practice with the left-hand pattern here. And what that means is all your turns are to the left. So just lower that nose and maintain 1,600 feet for me. Actually, you know what? While we're here, let's go ahead and gently bring the power back to, uh, let's do the, let's go to idle. Get real slow on the power decrease. There you go. Now, lower the nose, but let, make it go about 75. And then bring the nose up a little bit. All right, right there. Now, it's going to slow down. Now, memorize that whistle sound. That's what you're going to want it to sound like on uh, on final. Okay? Okay. Bring the power back in some more. 1750. And just for the heck of it, let's uh, let's do a 360 degree turn bear to your left. Whatever angle of bank you want. You're going to be rowing. You're going to go back down to uh, Alabama and start flying, and then they're going to say, have you ever flown before? And I guarantee you that's the first question they're going to ask you. Yeah. And you're going to say, yeah, I got uh, some steering time. And the guy's going to be like, whoa, really? <laughs> like, you went for a ride in one? And you're like, no, I got, like, you know, a couple hours in one. I was like, oh, well, and he's, gonna gonna be, he's going to be pissed because he, he wants to, your, your flight instructor will want to do it. Right. Well, what's the... Like, what do people normally do of uh, primary training in now? Is it, you know, uh, not yeah, no, no. That's good. We'll try a right-hand turn. So if you ever want to fly a steerman, you actually have to get your license uh, in, like, in a Cessna. Uh, I, I, like, I kind of like the old-school Cessnas. There's other airplanes now called Diamonds uh, that they're really uh, uh, economical to learn how to fly in. Let's do a right 360. Uh, Piper. Cherokee, you don't really want to get your license in a 
Cirrus. That's what they're doing here at Western, and that's because the kids at Western uh, want to fly and look at an iPad on the instrument panel. <laughs> and that's what Cirrus have, and they're willing to pay for that. So to get your pilot's license at the Western costs a ton of money because you're flying an expensive airplane. Right. Look how smooth it is up here. It's perfect. Oh, very nice. Okay. You heard me. You're going to be just fine here. All right, roll the wings to level here. Let me let me uh, show you what I want you to do. You see over here, there's that big, really green field on the far side of it is trees, and on, on the closest side there's a road. So it's in a big rectangle. Do you see it right there off your right wing? Uh, the yellow patch. What's that? that? The yellow patch. Is that what I'm? No, not for? right there. The one on the far side of that road. It's on the south side of the road, but it's on the north side of those trees. It's in a big rectangle. Okay, I think that's what Okay, you're well, you'll see it when we get a little closer. We're going to imagine there's a runway that runs parallel to that road, You're right in the middle of the field. Okay. okay? So let's uh, let's take a, a right-hand turn. I want you to, to descend down to 1,600 feet, and I want you to fly parallel with the road back to the east. I'm sorry, to the west. So we're going to do a 180 here. Yeah. Okay. That's 90 degrees. Keep it going right. Good. Okay. We'll roll the wings to level here. What's nice is there's a road right off your right wing. That's east and west as well. Now, right off our left wing tip, that's where our field is. It's really bright colored green okay. this way, okay? Uh, we're on the end of our field, so we'll bring the power back to 1,500 RPM. And that's what you're going to do in the pattern today. Now, we want to lower the nose. We're going to start our descent 75 miles an hour. Good. Now, if you look at your top right instrument, you can see we're descending right now. Okay? Yep. Let's go ahead and make a left-hand turn. 30-degree angle of bank turn. 90-degree change of direction. So we, won't, we don't want to do anything too steep, but now we want to go to the south. Yep. And then we'll roll the wings back to level. Now, Barrett, here's what you need to know when you learn how to land. You adjust your rate of descent by using the throttle. So if we're high, you're going to bring the power back. You don't want to put the thing in a power dive to get it down to the ground because it's going to speed up. Right. All right. But if we're going slow, you adjust your speed by pitch. So if we're going, let's say, 60, obviously you're not going to have power. You're just going to lower the nose. Right. So like right now, we're a little bit on the high side. So start bringing the power back a little bit. Nope. Bring the power back. Maintain your airspeed. Come right. back to about 1,300 RPM. There is your runway right there. Let's make a left-hand turn. Shadow turn, 30 degrees. Good. Bring the power back some more. All right. So good. Now lower the nose. Maintain your airspeed of 75 to 80 miles an hour. And we'll roll the wings back to level. Now in your mind's eye, let's just imagine that right ahead of you, there's a big runway. It's about 100 feet wide by 4,000 feet long, right ahead of you. And now right now, if you look, you can't see the runway, so lower the nose some more. Lower the nose some more, there you go. Let it come down now. Do you hear that whistle? Yep. So bring the power back, that back. And lower the nose. Let, let, we'll lower the nose some more. There you go. Get it on down there. Cool. Let's go around. Bring the power back in. So lower the nose. Get your airspeed just like you did when you took off. Get 75 miles an hour out of it, and then we'll climb straight ahead. Here's the deal on that. The quality of your landing is going to be very dependent on your approach. So if you shoot a really good approach, your landing is going to be pretty good. Okay. All right. So if you shoot a crummy approach, landing is probably probably not going to be that good. Right. All right, here we are at uh, 200, 300 feet above the ground. Let's, let's make a shallow climbing turn to your left. Follow that road off your left wing. It's just a big rectangle in the sky is all it is.
you kind of understand what we're trying to do here with the approaches? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There looks like there's a dirt road right down here off your left wing right about now. Let's go ahead and make another left-hand turn. Okay. I don't know. I don't, wouldn't even call it a road, but trail, maybe. Follow that. That's east and west. Continue your climb at 75 miles an hour. Right now, you're on what we call left downwind. Okay, we're left to downwind for that main, that runway. your instructor that, yeah, I was out shooting, uh, learning how to land the steerman. He's got an hour and a half of steerman time, or two hours. He's going to be like, you were doing what? <laughs> learning how to land it. He's like, in two hours? And you're going to be like, yeah. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah. All right, so that, we're at the end of our runway. Imaginary runway, go ahead and bring the power back to 1,500 RPM. Lower the nose. Maintain your airspeed at 75. That's going to be critical. We don't want to stall it in the pattern. Let's go ahead and make our left base turn here. We're going to start that a little earlier than later because we're a little lower. We need to get back up to 1,600 feet, so we'll start our left hand turn a little earlier. There you go. And we're heading to the south. This is what we call your left base. What makes this kind of fun is it's uh, you have to make the decision to add power, reduce power, all the way down to the ground. It's kind of cool. So remember, if you think you're high, you want to bring the power off. If you think you're low, you got to bring the power in. There you go. Good. There's your 30 degree angle of bank turn right there. Can you hear that whistle? Not yet. Now you should be able to. Yeah. Good. And so what you don't want to do is just don't be too fixated on speed, because the speed, we want it to be at least 75 miles an hour. If it's a little bit higher than that, that's fine. There you go. So bring the power back a little bit more. The runway's right ahead of you. And, so, and when you do that, you need to lower the nose. There you go. Now she's coming down. Cool. All right, Barry, let's bring the power back in. It's 1,800. And we'll climb straight ahead. There are some power lines right ahead of you. We're above them right now, just so you know. Take a left-hand turn here before this house. And we're going to climb. Keep this left-hand turn going. So, so remember, when we go back to, to Kalamazoo, the, you know, we want to really concentrate on shooting the best approach you can. Because if you shoot a good approach, it'll translate into, it should translate into a good landing. All right, let's make another left-hand turn. I want you to head to the west and just continue climbing on up. Good. Now let me just verify, this is in fact what you wanted to do, right? Yeah. Okay. We're going to go back to uh, Kalamazoo. We're going to shoot two landings back there. Okay. All right. So, and what we're going to do is we're going to do what we call stop and goes. What that is, is we're going to come down, we're going to land the airplane, and having the airplane touch the ground, um, that's where it kind of starts. Because so, we've got to keep it going straight, because we know that the airplane's going to want to go to the left, because of the slight left or right crosswind you're going to have. 
then we're going to uh, get it all the way stopped on the runway. And then once it's stopped, we're going to check everything, make sure we're good, and then we're going to uh, take off and do another run. Matter. We're looking for 1,500 feet. There's a little updraft from Mother Nature. We'll take that. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, you see that lake off your right and yep. in, into the lake? Head towards that. We're going to make what we call, Barrett, a, a standard entry into the pattern. And what that means is there's Kalamazoo right ahead of you off your right. So we're going to head back to Kalamazoo on what we call a 45 degree angle to the runway that we're going to land on. Okay. okay. So maintain this altitude. Let me contact the tower. See if we can uh, arrange this. Kalamazoo Tower, Stemmon 1. We're over the east side of Long Lake inbound. Uh, stop and go if we can. Runway 17. Stemmon 1, Kalamazoo Tower, Port Midfield on the left downwind, runway 17. Give me a call, left downwind, midfield, 17, Stemmon 1. All right, let's make a uh, right hand turn head for the right for the middle of the airport off your right. This yeah. You see the airport there? Yep. Okay. Now, here we are at about 1,600 feet. We'll level off here. We'll bring the power back a little bit so we don't want to climb anymore. That's good right there. 1,700 or so. Man, it's nice and smooth up here. Goodness. And what little wind we have there, to be honest, it, it's, it's going like seven or eight miles an hour. It, it's not much. So I'll give you a couple of landmarks. Uh, when we get up here, we got uh, the runway is north-south, basically. It's a little off, it's off by like 10 degrees, but I want you to fly parallel to that runway. Or there's Sprinkle Road down here. It's off your left. You can see the road. The car's on it right now. You see it there? Yep. That's north-south. That's probably, probably a better uh, thing to, to fly. So fly parallel with that once we get a little closer. On the end of our airport is Kilgore Avenue. Kilgore is north and south. Okay. So when we get over Kilgore, we'll make another left-hand turn. You're gonna line it, line up with Kilgore, and then finally the runway, 17. All right, let's go ahead and make that right-hand turn here. Follow Sprinkle Road. There you go. So then we'll roll the wings to level. Calm two towers, Stearman one, midfield left, downwind one seven. Stearman one, runway one seven, quick for the option. Stearman one. Okay, cool. So we can do this. There's no one around. Awesome. Excellent. So when we get. Start, actually, I would recommend we're a little high, so bring the power back at this point to like we did before. Uh, let's go 1,400 RPM. There you go. Now, we were looking for 75 miles an hour or greater, so lower that nose a little bit for me. Yeah, that's good. Did you try to be on the high side of 75? It doesn't really matter. All we care about is we, we don't want to stall the plane, so as long as it's above 75, there's a little bit of margin of error built in there, so even if we're going like 85 right now, right now wouldn't be a big deal. Okay. And awesome, we're gonna let it make a jet wait for us. So lower that nose a little bit more. Let's go down. Okay, let's go ahead and make this left hand turn. Bring the power back a little bit more. There's Kilgore Road off your left. Yep. So lower the nose. You're at 65. Lower the nose some more. There you go. Maintain that speed. Captain 3791, Kalamazoo Tower, hold short, runway 17. Hold short. All right, there's 17. Yep. So when you're ready, start making your left hand turn. You're going a little slow. So uh, lower that nose a little bit and bring the power in a little bit more. There you go, good. Now the wind's going to start blowing you to your left, so start bringing that, get it all lined up. To your left. There you go. OK, 
Okay, so make sure your heels are on the floorboards. Yes? Yep. All right, so bring the power back. So lower the nose some more. Let it come down. Let it come down to the ground. So you see how it's, being, it's drifting over to the right? There you go. Add a little power in here. All right, so focusing on infinity. Keep yep. it off the ground. Keep it off the ground. Keep it off the ground. Keep it off the ground. All right. So stick in your lap. Small little rudder inputs. All right. You ready to go again? Yep. S stick in neutral. Bring the power all the way forward. Look straight ahead. Focus on infinity. Good. Here comes uh, the tail's coming off the ground. Good. She's ready to go. Bear, bring the there. We go. Good. Start bringing the power back. 1800 RPM. And lower the nose. Let's go ahead and make a left hand turn out now, so they can get that jet out. Good. What do you think about that? Pretty good, huh? Mike yeah. Turn you did good. I'm straight ahead for now. Awesome. And so the idea is when we came down, you listen to the airplane all the way down to the ground. Okay. Yep. That was good. You typically want to try to come in lower on the approach? No, that was fine. That was good. I, ha I added a little bit of power because it just helped everything, slowed everything down. Because the idea is when you, when you come down, you can see the runway, but when you flare, you can't. But I, I know you, uh, you can see the size of the runway. Right. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to do the same thing. I wanted you to get away from the airport uh, so they can get that jet out. So we are looking for altitude, and then we'll uh, contact the tower again. Okay. So that's why people fly patterns at airports, because it takes practice. And every time you fly, it's different, because sometimes you have heavy winds, Sometimes you have light winds, sometimes they got bumps, sometimes it's smooth. Altitude tower strip one. We're gonna climb on out and then uh, make a right hand turn and enter on the 45 back for 17. Chairman one, uh, Roger, that's approved as requested. Report reestablished in the downwind for 17. Chairman one, thank you, sir. Awesome, you did a solid. Alright, so we want to be at 1600 feet. And let's make a uh, yeah, just keep on climbing straight ahead. That was really good. But the idea is when you come down on the final you, and you flare and you can't see the runway anymore, then you just listen to the airplane and you start feeling for the ground. You know, right. what you don't want to do is have it stall when you're like three feet above the air and you know, above the ground, it's going to bounce on in. Could right. damage the landing gear or such. Yeah, try to avoid that. Yeah, I won't let that happen. All right, let's make a right-hand turn. Okay, do you have any questions before we try this again? No, let's do it. All right. We're going to enter on the same as you did before on a 45 degree angle. So there's your leg right here. So uh, well, once we get over the leg, we'll make a right hand turn. Uh, just maintain uh, 800 feet above the ground. So we're looking at 1,600 feet above sea level. And let's go ahead and make that right hand turn now. Head right back for the middle of the airport. Good. We'll roll the wings to the level, and let's go ahead and head for the middle of the airport and bring the power back. I want you to descend to 1,600 feet. And that's good right there on the power, because what's going to happen is it, as the airplane slows down, just keep it right here. It'll come down on its own. You don't have to uh, put it into a descent. Look at your vertical speed indicator. Yeah, it's coming down right now. now. Well, 
Well, I was I was trying to actually be uh, really kind to the jet guy down there and get out of his way. Apparently, they, uh, he's not being released yet. Because uh, so. we're just flying up here doing whatever. Yeah. Yeah, he still hasn't moved yet. No, believe me, he's watching. <laughs> I don't want that. You know, that's not meant to be pressure. But uh, I'll bet you those guys can't do what you just did. And they're flying airlines. Custom 3791, turn left heading 140, runway 173 for takeoff. Perfect. Okay, so here's the deal. We have, now we have... 3791, uh, turn right heading 200, runway 17 clear for takeoff. Let's go ahead and make a right hand right, turn right, here, Barrett. Two, I want you to fly two, parallel with the runway a little bit farther out. Because now we have jet turbulence to deal with. Oh, excellent. All right. When you're on the ground and a jet take off, takes off and head of you, they make you wait three minutes for wingtip vortices. Now these airplanes here don't have a lot of wing, wingtip vortices, but is think that a about. Winglet? I'm sorry. Is that a winglet? Yeah, but it's a small airplane. It's not really heavy, right? Okay. But think about what the wind's doing. The wind is blowing from from uh, left to right when we're lined up on final right. Yep. And so what that means is the wingtip vortices are going to be drifting with the wind. So they're going to be drifting out you know, to the uh, northwest. Calm two towers, Stearman one, up into the left, that went for one seven. Stearman one, uh, Roger, check the regional jet departing runway one seven. You have them in sight. Inside, Stearman one. Stearman one, uh, Roger, caution wing turbulence runway one seven, clear for the option. Clear for the option, and uh, you mind if we do a uh, right three sixty for turbulence spacing? Stearman one, uh, make right three sixty. All right, let's make a right 360. I don't want to mess around with that. What? What's the point? Yeah, we don't need to do a really tight one. Do a, do a shallow one because I want more time to go by. There you go. That's 90 degrees. He's on the roll right now. Okay, roll the wings back to level here. You see the jet? Right when that jet breaks ground right now, that's where the vortices are. Not when he takes, not when he starts to roll, because the wings aren't great lift when he starts to roll. It's when the airplane starts to fly. So the, the thing is, we want to land before him, and we will. All right, let's make a 180 to your right. Get back on the uh, downwind. We're still uh, cleared to land. All right, Barrett, we'll roll the wings to level. There is the end of your runway off your left wing tip. We'll bring the power back to about 1,500 RPM now. And the reason why it's only 1,500, because now we're about 300 feet lower than we were before on the last uh, last time we were up at about 1,800. Awesome. There's Kilgore Avenue off your left wing. Let's go ahead and make our left hand turn here. Start your turns too early than too late, because if it's too late, then that means it's really steep. So shallow is better here. Right. Good. Add a little bit of power. If we lost the engine right now, we're not making the runway. Your airspeed's right where you want it. Good. This one's better. This approach is really, really good. Good. Now just keep this the rate of descent all the way to the ground. The wind stock is saying you have a little left to right crosswind, so lower the nose and yeah, get it back to the left a little tiny bit. Good. Lower the nose some more. All right. So we're going a little bit to the to uh, the right. So there we go. Oop. And that's a little bit hard there. Did. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Calvary Tower, uh, 367 string uniform, OJAC visual 17. So you can 
see the airplane wants to go to the left. 373 from Kalamazoo Tower, right. runway 17, clear to land. Where are we going to get off here? Clear to land, uh, 17, that's it, 373. All right, make a right-hand turn. Kalamazoo Tower, Sky 1545 Echo on Fox Heart, short of Bravo, ready for 17. Go straight, they're going to tell us what to do. Steerman 1, taxi Bravo to the zoo. Steerman 1, add a little power and we'll make straight ahead and we'll make a left-hand turn. So the first one was really good. The second one, you got a little bit above the ground, and then it slowed down, and, it, and then it dropped in, right? Yeah. And then what it did is it bounced back in the air. Five, four, five, Echo Kalamazoo Tower. Turn and so what I did, once it came up in the air, I added some power. Because if you didn't add any power, it's going to slam right back into the ground. So, we, so you added power, and it kept it flying. And then you kind of nursed it back on. So you can see that learning how to land this thing, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot There's of There's a inputs. lot of stuff going on. And also, you know, you did have some more crosswind, I think, on the second landing than you did on the first, because the airplane was kind of sliding to the right, as you maybe saw. I had a better, like, uh, or smoother approach on the second one. Yeah, but, uh, I, I, I agree. It was nice. I mean, you had it all set up. And the only thing was it started, you know, when you got on final, it was drift to the right. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if you would have landed it, and when it's drifting to the right, number one, we're really close to the lights on the right-hand side. But number two, it's going to go to the left. All right, so we'll make this right-hand turn here. Tell you what, Baird, I'm going to take it from here. Okay. I'm going to put this thing really close to the new standard. So you know the drill, uh, bring the uh, mixture all the way back to, to lean. That's the little red ball. There you go. And then you'll add a little bit of power. Hold that right there. And then turn the magneto switch to off. There you go. And then bring the... There, perfect. That's it. 